welcome to part 2 of the skyrim modding guide series the objective is to convert skyrim into a role playing modern game if you have not watched the first video i would highly recommend watching it as i showcase mods that absolutely transform the game in this video we'll talk about changing skyrim's magic overhauling the college of winterhold adding mods that enhance the immersion changing the visuals and, and environment and more so let's get started then Odin spell pack This is a new spell pack by the one only Anaxion. The mod says the following: Odin is what magic in Skyrim should have been. It improves and fixes vanilla Skyrim spells, makes scrolls and staves viable, and adds new spells, scrolls and staves inspired by previous Elder Scrolls magic. For a pure magic player like all of us here at Magic Addict, Skyrim's magic was extremely underwhelming. Many spells in Morrowind were not present and many effects were missing. If you want to specialize in restoration or illusion schools of magic, you have spells that enable you to do that. Uh, this spell pack makes playing as a pure mage a more viable option. An honorable mention also goes to Mysticism by Simon Magus. Check out both the spell packs and see which suits you. I chose the Odin spell pack. There's another mod that distributes Odin spells to NPCs. Um so you can expect more variety with enemy mages casting all sorts of spells at you. Install that one too so you get that more of an feel where NPCs had a wide range of spells at their disposal. Also install the patch that adds ordinator perk support to ordin spells. This can be found in the ordinator patch section. This mod overhauls the wards of vanilla Skyrim and makes them stronger. They are also customizable. The cool thing about this mod is that wards will enable you to block a melee weapon and also deflect arrows. This mod also adds two more ward spells at expert and master level. There's a patch for the Odin spell pack. Download that too. This is a must have for a defensive mage. Dual casting fix. This is a legendary bug that has existed in Skyrim community for more than 12 years. Fortunately, Power of 3 is a genius modder who managed to fix it in 2023. I remember the Skyrim community in multiple Discord channels and Reddit forums celebrating that day. You can find that fix here and it's compatible with all game versions. This fix should be included in all Skyrim load orders especially if you're playing as a mage. Magic sneak attacks. So a sneaky mage casts a long range spell and and never gets sneak benefits. While a stealth archer enjoyed 2x, 3x, 4x sneak damage. That was totally unfair for us mages, right? Enter this awesome mod by Power of 3. Now you can enjoy the glorious sounds of sneak attack multipliers. No god and surrender non lethal pacifist shielding options if you like playing as a pacifist like i do this mod adds an illusion spell called knockout that knocks out enemies for some time this mod adds a surrender mechanic too where enemies can surrender if their health is low all the parameters are configurable via the mcm menus holy templar magic this spell pack adds six new offensive restoration spells essentially holy spells that do more damage to undead The mod author has made a lot of spell packs as you can see from her profile. The visual effects on these spells are incredible. Uh, the mod author clearly is talented at creating these stunning spells. The visual effects of vanilla spells or even the spells from Odin or Mysticism pale into comparison compared to what we have here. I installed just the Holy Templar magic spell pack as I like to have more offensive options in the Restoration School of Magic. Do check out the profile of the mod author. and see what fits your playstyle a miracle of flight i know i know lots of skyrim purists will scoff at this but i love it and i don't care the mod also is created by the one and only ni sleon it adds three modes of flying transportation for skilled mages a flying carpet a floating disc and a dwemer's flying disc I've tested all the three of them, and each of them have different top speeds and turning radiuses. All of them feel different when you fly them. Flying is simple: cast a spell, crouch to move automatically, and you can steer left or right with concentration spells. 
Even though I prefer walking in Skyrim, I like having this convenience. For example, I do a lot of walking between Solitude and Makath. And after Akath Pastan, there is no direct road towards Solitude. So I just cast the Slow Fall spell from the Orion spell pack and cast this spell and fly till I reach the road to Solitude. Amazing. Again, Skyrim Purus, I am a Morrowind player and I fly all the time. With so much verticality in Skyrim, levitation saves a lot of time and effort, so I like levitating whenever possible. Sadly, no spell pack adds these much needed spells for a pure mage. I got these spells from the Skygafall mod which enables you to play the main quest of Daggerfall in the, in the Skyrim engine. I went into the creation kit, added these and some other interesting spells from Daggerfall to the level list and now they are sold by spell vendors. If you want me to make a video on the, this process, let me know. I use the levitation spell for short distance vertical exploration like flying over a hill and use the spells from the miracle of flight for long distance travel. If you download these, please use these spells responsibly. Don't go flying over city walls and don't cast the recall spell from within a city. There are some mods that give you the option to create custom spells and create staves etc. I did not opt to install those. The Orient spell pack adds interesting staves and spells and I plan to use those. So all of us mage players have been to the College of Winterhold and are sick of that place which is extremely dull and boring. So let's install few mods that changes that. Obscure College of Winterhold. This is a complete overhaul of the college towers. As you see, signs have been placed throughout the college. The Hall of Elements has a lecture hall and now a basement floor where you can practice your spells. The Arcanium is absolutely stunning and spans multiple stories, filling the height of the college's great tower with tall bookcases stretching to touch the ceiling. The Hall of Countenance and the Archmage quarters are also overhauled. The college exterior too has received many subtle tweaks and updates that adds to the mystical and magical atmosphere. Immersive College NPCs This mod adds students and guards to the College of Winterhold for added immersion. The Vanilla College had very few students and now it feels like a top tier magical school. There are 5 novices, 3 mages, 8 college guardians and even a groundskeeper. College of Winterhold Quest Expansion this one by Jay Serpa adds 7 new quests as part of the College of Winterhold faction questline. Very cool. Very simple, I hate fast travel. It is extremely immersion breaking. I always use low friendly ways of travelling like using boats or carriages. But the best way to experience Skyrim is to walk or fly. So survival mode is always on when I play Skyrim. I chose uh, Sunhem because it is the only mod which got the thirst mechanic right. Yeah essentially this mod tracks hunger, thirst and cold. So you need to take care of your character's needs. Stock up on food, ensure you have the right clothing, all of, the, all of that matters. It also adds water skins and water bottles. Filling up on water from lakes and rivers is so adorable. And finally, everything is customizable in the MCM to suit your playstyle. A wonderful mod that changes the carriage and ferry system. As you can see, the mod adds many ferries even in small towns and minor locations. For example, Lake Irinalta has a ferry stop. The best part about this mod is that you can ask the carriage driver to drop you off at minor locations, small towns, lumber mills, etc. For example, if you want to go from Solitude to Riften, you can get off at Shortstone and enjoy some walking in the Rift. It really aids in immersive travel. Jay Sarpa is a rockstar mod creator. Many of his mods add so much to your Skyrim game immersion. Here are some of his mods that I consider essential. These mods are Bandit Line Expansion, Civil War Lines Expansion, Extended Guard Dialogue, Forsworn and Thalmor Lines Expansion, 
Vampire Lines Expansion. One day I was walking in the rift in glorious summer weather and I met a guard and he spoke about my alchemical ways. Amazing. Azurite Weathers 2 I have always admired the work of Dr. Jacopo, who has been developing weather mods for more than 10 years. Using Azurite Weathers 2 was a no-brainer as I did try out his Azurite 1 a few years back. In order to get Azurite Weathers 2 to work, I had to install community shaders and its associated requirements. In my testing of Azurite Weathers 2, um, I felt sunlight was generally stronger, nights are darker, fog is foggier and storms are far more intense. Dr. Jacopo also has introduced new high quality storm audio. This definitely is an upgrade from Azurite 1. Weather can change from rainy to snowy as you climb elevation and you get bright sunny days with blue skies. Skyrim is also more foggy in the fall and winter. Many people ask about ENBs. Um, I like Skyrim to look like Skyrim and not like other games. So I don't install ENBs. I just install a simple weather mod like Azurite Weathers 2 and install community shaders which it requires. Landscape mods. For landscapes, I love Enhanced Landscape and Skyland. They add ton of objects in the world of Skyrim. Many of these objects are handcrafted materials generated from programmatic textures. There are new options like Fantasia Landscapes or Atlantean Landscape. You may choose those if you like them. Fabled Forests. For trees, I love Fabled Forests. This makes Vaila trees larger. The forests of Falkreath and Hafingar are taller and denser and feel more like primeval forests. There are pines around Whiterun but still plenty of open tundra to be found. The rift is a bit more densely forested with aspens. Uh, the reach has more twisted reach trees here and there are a few pockets of more forested areas. The Morthal swamp has been transformed. There are so many trees here now. If you don't like the style of fabled forests, you can install Happy Trees or Nature of the Wild Lines. Both are very good tree mods. Uh, do install the Fable Forest Patch Compendium, especially if you, have if you have installed some new towns. These patches remove trees that conflict with additions of these new towns. Seasons of Skyrim and Turn of the Seasons this, These mods add visually distinct summer, autumn and spring seasons in Skyrim. In my limited testing, it does work. Look at this image of the rift in the summer and the same image at the same location in the fall. It's amazing how the leaf rift changed from yellow leaves to red leaves. I'm yet to test the winter winter season, but I did find some patches of snow near Whiterun in the fall. So extremely interesting. Four seasons in Skyrim will be amazing and if if any of you have has experienced winter in Skyrim with these mods, I would love to read up on your comments. Alchemy plant visuals. If you, like me, love alchemy, then you got to install these stunning visuals of all of these plants you find whenever you walk around Skyrim. All of these stunning flowers are just asking you to pick them. Yes, every ingredient has its own mod. Robes Retextures SE This mod is created by an extremely talented clothing and armor modder, Shavbio. Take a look at his profile and you see some incredible looking retextures of weapons, armors and clothing. As a mage, for me this was the must have mod. Just look at the color and attention to detail in all of these robes. The Novice, Apprentice, Adept, Expert and Master level robes look incredible. Then you have the Telvani robes, the Priest robes, the Sijik robes and more. Amazing work. The best part is that these are just retextures of vanilla robes so there won't be any conflicts or compatibility issues. And if you're not playing as a mage, do check out Shavbio's profile and download whatever retexture mods that works for you. Amazing apparel and accessories. Okay, now that we have these amazing looking robes, what if you want the Ash Mage robe or the House Telvani robes but you are a low level character? This mod allows you to craft all the robes in the game. Essentially, it, it adds crafting recipes to allow the player access to all possible clothing options. A new crafting station called the Fabric Loom is added in major cities. You need to craft color pigments and fabric to create robes. I love crafting, it gives you stuff to do in the world and I can mix and match and craft robes to keep things fresh. Look at all of these beautiful robes. I would love to craft all of these robes and then store them in my closet. Fashions of the 4th Era This is a mod that attempts to bring sartorial diversity into the world of Skyrim by adding new clothes and accessories to the game. 
Most NPCs will have randomized outfits. This is based on level lists so that you won't get a noble in beggar's clothes or stuff like that. Uh, this is done for each new playthrough. I really love this feature. It mixes things up for all NPCs and makes the world more visually interesting. I especially like the noble outfits and the monk priest robes that I added. This mod also adds a crafting feature where you, you can craft all of these new clothes at the tanning rack. Uh, this mod is not available in Nexus mods so you'll have to download it from the author's website. Also download the patch for this mod, Fractions of the 4th Era Unscripted from Nexus Mods. This patch disables the scripted levelless injection in favor of the traditional levelless edits using Spell Item Bugged Distributor. Cathedral Player and NPC Overhaul, HMB2. I don't care about beautifying NPC faces, making them like anime characters, making them prettier or changing their bodies etc. All of that crap is for kids. However, if you are bored of the same vanilla NPC faces, then I would suggest Cathedral Player and NPC Overhaul HMB2 from the one and only Dr. Jacopo, the creator of Azurite Weathers. I chose this one over Nordic faces just because it is from Dr. Jacopo. Flat World Map Framework and Skyrim Paper Map made by Karotuts. This mod changes the default 3D Skyrim map to a flat paper map and the map by Karo is stunning. If you are bored of 3D maps and you want to change, you can install this. Initially I was put off by the smaller scale of the map in game but I am growing to appreciate paper maps. I always set the Flat World Map Framework last in your load order. True HUD HUD Additions this mod adds floating info bars on NPCs. You have health, magicka and stamina bars during combat. Certain enemies you encounter will automatically get detected as bosses and the mod will display their health in form of a big static bar on your screen. This is not the most modern HUD but I like this one. I enjoy observing and manipulating NPC magicka and stamina bars during combat. Dear Dairy Dark Mode Sky UI Menu Replacer this one totally overhauls the UI fonts and colors of the settings screen, the MCM mod menu screens, the quest journal screen, the local map screen, inventory UI, crafting screens and more. The colors are beautiful, the dark mode is fantastic for your eyes, it feels like a new game. Dialogue History Another amazing mod by Power of 3. This one logs all the conversations between the player and NPCs inside the dialogue menu. Now, you can go back and read up on some important information without having to speak to the NPC again. This brings a feature CRPGs always had and now Skyrim is better for it. I downloaded some quest mods just to make things interesting and I, and I felt these were ideal for a new playthrough. These are Red Eagle Reborn, Siren Root, A Deluge of Deceit. The Gift of Saturalia, A Quest for the Holidays Heart of the Reach Beyond Skyrim Bruma Saints and Seducers Extended Cut Also, don't forget the Immersive World Encounters Final SE. This mod also adds few quests. All of these quest lines have amazing voiceovers and are highly rated and will offer some new experiences for a playthrough. Dying the Lord and Text Gen. So we have reached that part of Skyrim modding when the end is near. <laughs> Once you're done installing all of these mods and are ready for a playthrough, it's time to generate the Lords or level of detail objects. I will just simply link the excellent Gamer Poet video on this process. Follow the process to the T. Don't make any changes or mistakes, just follow the video, okay? The Lord generating process takes some time, so better have some patience. Always run Dinder Lord and Text Gen only at the end of your modding process. If you add any mod that creates new structures or changes the environment, then you have to rerun Dinder Lord again. All right. Congratulations on trans totally transforming Skyrim into a modern role-playing game. Next Friday, we will discuss a new build for a new character. We will discuss the character's background, her skills, abilities, interests for a new series. This series will have 5 or 6 acts and the character will travel, explore and work in 3 provinces of Tamriel. 
Join me each Friday for an epic adventure filled with exploration, wonder, and observe the personal spiritual growth of our character. Thank you so much for watching and consider smashing that like button if this video was remotely useful or entertaining. May the divines watch over you.